With the successful drilling of the hole for the suction bulkhead in the wet dry trickle filter and its placement, part five of LA Fish Guys begins the assembly of the 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium's filter system. And as I mentioned, part five encompasses the installation of the aquarium's filter system. It's actually comprised of two systems, one that provides the biological aspects, the other that creates the strong water movement within the tank. Both systems have additional equipment, such as UV sterilization and refrigeration, as well as mechanical filtration. Part of the art of incorporating everything is to do so with access and serviceability in mind. Well, um, actually what I, I would like anything before you get here. too much further, yeah, we should probably consider cutting this in half. What I'd like is for you to redo that whole length of pipe. Uh, the goal is to have this as close to the bottom as possible. That way if you have to remove it, you're removing the minimum amount of as possible. Now, if that's going to screw you up as far as the amount of PVC pipe you have left, no. then don't do it. But do you understand what I'm saying? So if we were to take out that pipe or that pump, I've got that all to take with it. Does that make sense to you? The closer the union fitting is to the pump, the question. less extra tubing because, I need to know. deal with if I ever have to remove that water pump. And, and, and this is very important, when you are um, gluing all of this in, turn, consciously make it a point to know where the printing on the pipe is. I don't want to see any printing. You're going to consciously make it a point to turn that pipe, twist that pipe so you don't see the lines. Again, plumbing is art and I, I don't yeah. want to see the printing. Okay. Um, if you're okay with that valve as it is, that's fine. It's just my thinking is you want to have it as close to the pump as possible. That way when you separate it, you're removing the minimum amount of, of, of plumbing as possible. As Condi works on the plumbing system that will create the internal circulation of 4,500 gallons an hour, we'll simultaneously begin to prepare to place the canopy on top of the tank. This will be the crowning touch. With the LED strip lights temporarily placed inside the overflow, we'll begin to unwrap the canopy and bring it inside. The canopy, just like the stand, has a mid-band that incorporates an inlaid metallic laminate. The canopy lid is assisted by expanding shock absorbers to help make lifting it up much easier. So we've lifted the canopy up in place. You can see it's got that metallic trim on it as well. And it really looks sharp. It balances out the whole unit. Uh, I won't open this yet, but he's got shocks um, or a um, gas shock that'll help lift this up and, and, and allow it to be a, a little easier to handle because that's just a pretty heavy piece by itself too. With the canopy now in place and Condi finishing the plumbing on the circulation um, water pump, I think I've located the best place for the UV unit. Right up front, just behind the door. For me, this is easy access and when plumbed in with soft tubing, it will be very easy to replace the bulbs when needed. There you go, keep going. I'm using the, the, that board back there as a, uh, uh, an alignment. There, okay. So now that's completely vertical. Does that give you enough space here? Now see, we're kind of gonna run into yeah, an issue wanna, here. We don't wanna... Okay, so you gotta wanna... think about that before you get that whole thing plumbed in there. The little white platform is used for the canister filter to sit on. Being elevated decreases the plumbing and elbows needed. It also places the canister filter at a height that allows it to be drained easily when replacing the pleated cartridge inside. These C-clips that I'm installing will hold the UV unit. This will easily unclip so as to allow me to remove the unit when needed. 
And I mentioned earlier, a vertical support. Unless you want to put an instruction, I don't care. All right, so Condi, he's going to put this vertical support in. Yeah, I'll get it, I'll get it. Right here. It'll miss your exit here, and it'll hold in the wet-dry trickle filter. Do you see any reason for that being in the way? Nope. And with that, we'll secure the vertical support. Oh, that was easier. <laughs> All right, so that one's in. Extra support, so here, look. Ready? And it's not mounted, but I am not tall enough to get it up high enough to let the springs take over. Where's your ladder? See? There you go, this goes up even further. And our first test of the canopy expanding assist shocks proves adequate, but it also appears as though the tank is so tall it requires a step ladder just to reach the top of the canopy lid. And as a safety, I've asked for an additional stick of hardwood to be used as a safety leg to make sure the lid stays up while I'm servicing the tank. As we secure the canopy to the wall behind the tank and confirm that the mock-up we've done to the plumbing that system right is what oh, we want, awesome it's now time to begin to glue and thread Which the various pipe? fittings. It's all resting on all those other pipes, so I'm okay with it. Not including the soft tubing, the hard pipe portion of the job is now ready to go to the next step. And that next step is the gluing with PVC cement and threading with Teflon tape. And then from there, it's the careful tightening of the threaded fittings, adapters, and inserts. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is MyFishTank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF, to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available and the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be that's myfishtank.com for a limited time only LA Fish Guys t-shirts are back whether it's gear for cleaning your own aquarium or one-upsmanship with your friends these quality Hanes BVTs are 100% pre-strung cotton. My three color LA Fish Guys logos are silk screened onto the back and front chest area of the shirts. Three sizes, medium, large, and extra large. Go to LAFishGuys.com and click on the t-shirt link to order your LA Fish Guys t-shirts today. Okay, we have our uh, ultraviolet sterilizer here. It's going to hold inside of it a bulb that generates a particular ultraviolet spectrum that uh, to you and I could be damaging if you stared at it directly. Uh, to parasites, it's uh, extremely, uh, uh, creates bad day. Uh, this bulb will go down inside a quartz sleeve that's inside this uh, PVC cylinder and the water will be pumped in from the bottom and exit the top. As it does so, it's exposed to those ultraviolet rays, so this becomes a sterilizer. So this bulb again slides down inside the cord sleeve, and we've got a connector here at the top. 
will connect into it. Maybe hear a crack, then we've tightened it too much. It's snug. Should be good. And then this has a couple of uh, C clamps here that hold this whole unit in place. Again, water comes in at the bottom, exits the top. If you were to hook up the input at the top, there will always be an air bubble in here that you'll never ever get rid of. So again, water comes in at the bottom, exits out at the top. While I'm not the biggest proponent of ultraviolet sterilizers, a system this large, it would be a mistake not to incorporate it into. And it's easy access. We'll have flexible tubing on both inlet and outlet which will allow us to remove this at a later time for replacing the bulb. Because in my opinion, the replacement of the bulb is the biggest pain in the ass with sterilizer units. Namely because if you hard pipe this into place or don't allow yourself the ability to remove it later on, it becomes quite awkward and difficult to remove the unit. And when things are difficult and awkward, they tend to not get taken care of. So we want to take care of that and we want to make sure that it's easy and accessible. And as we finish assembling the filter system, we progress to working on the lighting system and adding the plug-ins to the water pumps. And Rick is uh, mounting the uh, plug-end for the Iwaki pump. And uh, Greg and Condi are starting to mount the LED strip lights got a total of eight of them that we need to place up on the underside of the canopy and I think we've got them equally spaced there'll be three rows two rows of three each strips and then the front one will be a row of two strips because it's a bow front tank and here's the first one uh, as I mentioned these are the aqua ray LEDs um, they're the combo version they are uh, combination of white and blue, all eight of them. I didn't see any need in a fish-only tank to have a set of whites and a set of blues, uh, so the combo works well for me. LED lighting being the current trend in aquarium keeping, we selected the Aquaray brand LEDs. These are available in a strip light or a square pod configuration. Included is the Aquaray controller. This controller is a two-channel system, and both channels offer increase and decrease or a dimming feature. And as I lower the canopy lid, it appears as though we have the LED strip lights spaced evenly across the top of the aquarium, as the light landing on the bottom of the tank seems equally spread out as well. We're at the point where we need to consider putting the rock and the gravel in the tank. Uh, I'm going to start with the rock because that can sit at the bottom of the tank, have a firm footing. Uh, the idea is there's two types of stone out there. One is called kind of driftwood rock. It has a series of uh, layers in it. Um, and then the other one is kind of a flagstone, real flat pieces. So we're going to use the, uh, the driftwood rock to build what I call the table legs that will elevate up. And then we're going to place those flat flagstone pieces over the top of it kind of create um, tables and legs, for lack of a better description. Ultimately, it's a series of caves, but I could see uh, a, a pillar of rock there, a pillar of rock, a pillar of rock, and a pillar of rock with a series of bridges across them and maybe a couple more pieces on there. All of that's the foundation for placing the decorative holes on top of it. But once we've got that rock in there, we can then bring the gravel and put it in. At that point, I think other than uh, Finishing the electrical down in the cabinet down here, uh, we're actually ready to start pouring water in that. So make it a point to come on back for the next part and see how we progress, and especially if there's going to be any leaks. You want to see if that happens as well.